how did you begin to think about putting together this this incredible collection that we're going to be launching soon, dropping soon, Birds of Solace? She was particularly grateful for the creative freedom to bring those birds, Birds of America originally, into her imaginary universe and you know make them her own and express her creativity she's also very happy that we have the animated versions as well we will have 20 animations and 2002 still image nfts and uh, she feels that the animations further bring them alive in this imaginary universe and paracosm effectively you know what she's doing is she's creating paracosms you know, parallel worlds that are very detailed, very expressed, and um, have their own flora, fauna, rules, and legends. <laughs>
someone had just told her about nfts like the night before and that was that 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 was that well thank you for doing that because i'm with you on some of the aesthetic right now and to see what Vivara has been doing with the flower girls and now with birds of sauce it's incredible and we need more of that we really need that and i'm curious for Vivara, what is it about taking something that you see in the physical world very hands-on jewelry painting children and then creating this sort of letting that beauty go into the metaverse or this other universe and what that a little bit about that experience <laughs> Just as she embraces and sort of dives into that world that she's creating, NFT is yet another dimension that she's embracing. So it's a similar experience to, you know, living in your fantasy and trying to put that on paper or on a digital screen and then transferring into NFT. So it's, it's another sort of dimension to her artistic experience. And it's a very interesting one like that. So you make uh, Flower Girls. Do you have any idea how successful it's going to be? Or what are, you, what are you thinking when you're making it? Just like maybe something good will happen. But, you know, what, what are your thoughts before it comes out? Well, and also, what was the impetus? Like, how did you come to create the Flower Girls? And then when it happened? So a little before and then after. So I can, I can talk about the impetus. So when we first started working together um, over a year ago now, Vivara shared her archive and mm. it probably a hundred terabytes of artworks, thousands and thousands of art artworks. And each PSD Photoshop file is, you know, over a, a, a gigabyte. She does like her layers and she doesn't believe in revision. So it's all in the same file, just hidden somewhere. And I started going through it. We immediately, we could see certain collections and series pop up. And we had the angels, we had the Genesis collection, that the impossible creatures, you know, slowly was, you know, started to make sense because a, a lot of the artworks were not created as part of the same series, but then, you know, they, they probably belong to the same period of her artistic uh, discovery. And then back in August, we were looking for new things to mint or new things to explore. And I found a folder with these girls, very young children, effectively, with flowers sticking out of their heads. And uh, these children were based on children of her friends. And so facial features were still mixed, but some were from her former students others were from children some were from children who were um, on the spectrum and um i thought that could become a, a very interesting collection we didn't think about so we i mean we thought about it in the same terms as um the impossible creatures so perhaps 200 300 editions and then of course we decided we would not use the original children because we didn't want to put children, uh, especially facial features of real life children out there online. So we worked to make them more grown up and more, I guess, generic. And then people started saying to her that, look, this could be a 10K collection. This could be a profile picture collection. Now, at that point, you know, that's a big commitment to get to 10K. So, Vervara, what are you thinking at that point? Are you thinking like, great, 10,000, I can figure it out? Or are you thinking, wow, this is going to be a lot of work and I don't know what's going to happen? Like, what are your thoughts before you're going to do it? Because it's a big commitment. She was never afraid of the amount of work because she loves working a lot. And in fact, she loves the volume of work, having a lot of work to look forward to. She didn't expect it to be this successful. And sometimes to this day, she looks back at early drafts and how we did it in this collection. And she's amazed at how beautiful and cool they turned out to be. We were lucky that one of her friends who worked with her in the past, in fact, for you know, more than 10 years, had just developed his own software to generate PFP projects. And effectively, we had access to bespoke software that we could customize and create something very unique. And there's a, there's a lot of thought that went into this collection. So the software would make sure that no two flower girls have more than X number of features in common to make them even more unique than your average generative algorithm. Actually, I have them scrolling in the back of my computer and they're just so beautiful and you can't stop looking at them and all these elements these things that it seems like you're interested in, your influence as a young girl, but also you see the jewelry, the detail, and this sort of mix of 
of surprising like red glasses and then this sort of juxtaposition of all of these elements they're just you cannot stop looking at them and they're really really beautiful i'd love to talk about also now um the next collection what the thinking was there how you approach that as a team but then how varvara how did you begin to think about putting together this this incredible collection that we're going to be launching soon dropping soon Birds of Solace. She was always very fond of the engravings, the original engravings, so she really treasured the opportunity to work with them. And she was particularly grateful for the creative freedom to bring those birds, Birds of America originally, into her imaginary universe and you know make them her own and express her creativity she's also very happy that we have the animated versions as well we will have 20 animations and 2002 still image nfts and uh, she feels that the animations further bring them alive in this imaginary universe and paracosm effectively you know what she's doing is she's creating paracosms you know, parallel worlds that are very detailed, very expressed, and um, have their own flora, fauna, rules, and legends. <laughs> Do you feel something about nature? I always feel like your work has some connection, very strong connection to nature. Is that, uh, does she feel something about the environment? Um, but there's certainly a very strong connection. And whenever I go out for a walk or, you know, to the forest, I always notice these small details, like a small berry or a small flower, or and this is something I, I, I try to instill in my son as well. There's a, a careful attention to details of the nature around us. And I think, the, and that's what I try to convey in the artworks as well, starting from the flower girls, where, as you mentioned, that there are you know, very specific details that bring them to life. And the birds of solace who are full of, you know, very unusual and exciting details. And I think that's what makes it very special, that connection and attention to detail. Do you have a favorite bird? And is there somebody, I mean, they all, you probably all have your heart, but is there a favorite one and why, why would, it, would you have, is there one favorite bird? In real life, her favorite bird is turtle dove, and it's like a dove, but smaller and more colorful. And it comes to her balcony every morning in, in Georgia, and she thinks that the bird is wishing her a good day every morning when, when it comes to visit. Otherwise, she I don't think she likes doves or pigeons, but she likes this particular uh, Georgian version of it, the turtle dove. And in terms of, I think, in the collection, we really like the flamingo. And out of the 2002 still images, she's done two that are one of one special editions, and one of them is the flamingo. You know, Vervar, is there a, um, a painting or a, a piece of art that you look to that that really influenced you? Is there an artist that really influenced you growing up? Well, you know, it's something that most people would probably expect her to say, but she loves Bosch. And, you know, the first time she saw uh, his works in the Prada Museum, she couldn't step away and she kept coming back. That you know, I'll add that a lot. A lot of people do compare her, uh, some of her artworks to his style. And of course, my mother. I grew up uh, watching her create, and she was a very interesting and unusual artist. So I, I embraced her style um, as well, and I'm very grateful for that. In the collection recently, you guys put out the, what do you call it, the evergreen token? The, the one with the full body with the green, you know, that you airdropped into? Um... Oh, yes, yes. There's the, it's one of the, I think one of the five or six tokens. There is the Times Square token, the evergreen token for um, long-term holders. And there's a spring token. There's a love token and the companion token. So is that about 
delighting the audience, keeping the audience engaged that you're airdropping them tokens? Like, how do you guys think about that? And I mean, obviously it, it's become the norm that you airdrop something to your holders every now and then to reward them. So, but in the, in our case, we had the Christmas edition. So that was just about Christmas. We had St. Valentine's Day edition, which is about um, St. Valentine's Day. For the tokens, they kept, they come with utility. So for instance, the, the Times Square token was for those who came to see the Flower Girls on Times Square. And the spring token was to celebrate the first day of spring. The evergreen token was to celebrate those holders who never listed their flower girls. Or if they did, it was way above the floor price. So mm -hmm. they had no real intention of selling. And I think the companion token was in recognition of sort of services to the community, supporting the community on Discord and Twitter. And the love token was in recognition of you know people who really supported the community from day one, like Gary V or Keith Grossman or you know many others who stood by um, Vivara and the Flower Girls from October onwards. I have a question around the kind of reach that the NFT you know being immersed now and working in this in this venue in this way what might have changed in terms of for both of you but for Vara you know what has changed the people flock to this <laughs> we hope they'll flock to this no pun intended um to bringing in like a global audience and how does that affect the way you think does it does it change the way you're thinking about the way you create and what what does it mean to you to have a lot of you know love from around the world a lot of support from around the world I'm curious so of course it's wonderful to be um, appreciated and it is sad that you know her own country did not appreciate her as much there were a handful of people who loved her and respected her but she's found a much more engaging audience elsewhere. Um, and, and this is absolutely wonderful. It hasn't changed the way she creates or the way she approaches her um, process, but uh, it may have added and boosted the creativity, that knowledge that you have a, a, an entire community behind you of people who love your art, who support your um, uh, art process. I always notice that when people move elsewhere, especially away from Russia, there is, you know, a greater freedom of not not just expression, but you know, uh, people are more feel more free to create and express themselves. I, I've never had any issues uh, expressing myself creatively, or I've never had shortage of fantasy uh, even back in Russia. But I, I do feel that it's it's opened up new opportunities for me to be even more creative in the future. You know, um, Russia has such a deep, beautiful culture. Is it important to, to, to display that around the world? Does she feel Russia has affected her art? You know, does she feel like a Russian artist? Do you feel that way, Barbara? So uh, of course there has been an influence, but I think in her case, it's, more down to the family. Her grandmother studied under Voloshin, who's a very prominent Russian artist. And, you know, growing up with, with her grandmother and mother surrounded by the, the arts, I think had more of an impact on her. But yes, of course, I mean, the, the country and the culture does have sort of an imprint as well. Rivera, what's your life like outside of the artwork? She's a work you're a workaholic, so, but there's gotta be something. You're a dog. We know you have a dog, your family. Oh, mine, you know. So she says, you know, when there's no work, I, I suffer a lot and I vouch for that. She would message me and call me asking for something to do. She, she does live to create and that is her main hobby. So her life, one way or another, centers around her work. But she does have a dog, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We, we try to travel around Georgia and explore the country, but she always has her laptop with her. And I've 
We've seen her work in the car. We've seen her work uh, while getting a tattoo in a tattoo salon. She created one or two flower girls while being tattooed. So <laughs> she never leaves her laptop. Her laptop is always with her, whatever she does. Even on the family getaway, she's working. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you heard of anyone who's taken, let's say flower girls and turned them into a tattoo? You know, what about an NFT? you know, sort of relationship with the tattoo or people, I don't know, are people doing that? Uh, we do, we do have at least one holder who um, Vavara promised to uh, create an outline of a flower girl to, for, to be used for a tattoo. Uh, I think I'll add that, that there are certain um, legal um, implications there because for instance, if one were to tattoo an actual flower girl, uh, that would probably be too much color. And depending on one's skin tone, it may or may not be very harmful to, to do so. So good point. Do, okay. do not do that at home. Yeah, uh, don't do that at home, even if she she did it. But you didn't probably do that. River, do you have any plans to come to America, to Los Angeles? Um, so yes, but so th th this gets a bit complicated, but because she's still a Russian citizen, she needs to get the Georgian residence permit first before she can apply for visas to other countries from within Georgia. Mm. Obviously going back to Russia is not an option. So she needs to get that process first and then she can apply for a visitor or art artist visa, visa of some sort to go to the States or anywhere really. Right now she can't travel. Okay. Uh, is there anyone you might want to collaborate? Is, are there other projects or any things that you're thinking about um, that you might share with us? So that's a tricky one. So the, we are doing some collaborations, but we can't reveal them. Okay. So the, the, there's a major collaboration in progress, let's say, for probably later this year. But yes, it's it's uh, we can't talk about that. Prabhu, <laughs> you know, you've had a strong a component of charity in in the work that you're doing where you're giving the funds back to to uh, groups you know how do you think about that i've always tried to help out and support and donate to charities as much as i could and even in georgia i'm i'm preparing soups uh, for homeless dogs of which there are quite a few there she says but obviously before NFT, she didn't really have the means to do it properly. Um, and she could only do, you know, as, as much as she could. And she's uh, absolutely delighted that the NFT journey and community has allowed her, enabled her to donate on a much bigger scale. I think that the flower girls, we, we've raised over $700,000 of which uh, I think 600 are earmarked for cha children's charities. I think 570,000 have already been donated and the rest will be donated this month. And over $100,000 have been spent uh, collecting children's artworks as NFTs. We've collected close to 700 artworks from 125 children across 20 or 30 countries. Hmm. Um, a lot of these children are on the spectrum, um, amazing, talented young artists. From, from almost all of these children, this was their first sale ever. Um, so it's a massive boost, uh, great encouragement for them to, 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 to create, to keep creating. Even if they don't pursue a career uh, in art, I think creativity in children is, is, is a must. And, you know, if we can do anything to inspire that and turn it into something they do as a family, I think that that's absolutely brilliant. And, you know, she, her Nightingale of Peace raised, I think, well over 100,000 uh, 100, by now, probably, including secondary $100,000 towards um, Save the Children's uh, mm. Ukraine Crisis Fund. But obviously, you know, the, the families are being displaced and, uh, and children are suffering uh, during the war in Ukraine. So that, that's amazing. But yeah, it's, it's uh, the ability to support through her artwork that I think was one of our favorite things, one of her favorite things about the, the, her NFT career to date. Thank you. Well, yeah, thank you guys very much. Um, and, you know, it's an honor to be 
uh, working with you on this collection. And you know, thanks for spending the time today to talk to us about it. And thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Okay. Bye, you guys. Thank you.